mean, I struggled. I'd done everything I could over here to get that mill to make money. But as soon as I bought the wood miser, and we only was running one up until November of 06, I bought my second wood miser. And uh, it really changed it. It's been a profit center ever since. I'm Ed Robbins, owner of a High Valley Veneer. I started it in 1990, buying and reselling logs originally. Then I seen the opportunity to start sawmilling. We started to uh, put our first meal in in 94 and used equipment. And uh, 98, we bought a meal with my brother and, and I sold it out to him in 99. Bought, bought the piping facility where we had a circle meal there and, two re and a resaw. And I just couldn't. Couldn't make it work, repairs, overhead. And uh, so in 05, I had an auction and I put my first wood miser in in 05. I thought he was joking. I mean, you know, I, I'd never, uh, this is my first time ever running one of these. I always ran the big meals and, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't think it would work. My name's Walt. I've been here uh, going on 13 years. I've been working in the lumber industry for 32, 33 years, something like that. But uh, I was very surprised whenever, once we got it up and got used to it, he asked me what I thought of it, and I said, I like it, you know, I like it a lot. I think as a sawyer, these mills kind of define what a true grade sawyer is. It's been about production for years and years, and I've saw production, you can't really get all the grade out of a log that a normal grade sawyer would want to get with the production. With these, you can. Well, this is what's got us through the recession. That's that is a good thing about it. Everyone, when we first put this mill in here, these guys that's got the big mills, they come in and look at it, and then make you know make comments that some were good, some were you know a lot of them would laugh. I thought we were crazy, but you know, we were making lumber and making money when everybody else was shutting down. That's the nice thing about these mills. There's a spot for the wood miser, and that is sawing that high dollar product where, you know, you're giving up a little volume, but you're making it on your margin. I've seen what it, it, you know, it's niche, and that sawing, you know, your high valuable lumber, getting a real good oversaw, you know, and production is really not that bad. I mean, we don't have the high production from these mills that you get from the other mills, but cutting this kind of wood here, you want to get the yield anyway. It's not about production or quantity, it's more about quality than, than anything else. These mills are excellent for that. For sawing the high dollar lumber, these, these mills, in my opinion, are the only way to go. I've got the big mills. I've got the big production mills. You know, I've got the medium mill that custom saws for me. And I've got the wood miser. And the wood miser will perform right with them. But the wood miser itself is very efficient. Even the edger, I mean, it's uh, the edger. I mean, I've never replaced anything on it but the blade. If we've even replaced them. Just a, and it's a very efficient meal. There's where the difference is from the big meals. Another factor of putting in the LT300 is maintenance. There's very little maintenance. Our expenses, parts and stuff like that. Probably blades is our biggest expense, but you know, that's, I guess that'd be typical. Consumption is as far as uh, electric goes, I guess it's minimal in comparison to the bigger mill. When I was running the circle mill over there, our electric bill was $3,200 a month. When I put the wood miser in, we got a 48 inch more bark chipper over there. It's the only other equipment I had besides the wood miser equipment. Our electric bill was $930 a month. Then we put the second wood miser in in 06, and our electric bill went up to $1,300 a month. And breakdown is minimal, and uh, we got 
maintenance man, which really runs the loader too, because he'd be twiddling his thumbs a lot if uh, that's all he'd done was maintenance. And especially with walnut, you know, there's a lot of metal in walnut. You hit a blade, hit metal on, a, on the big 8, 10, 12 inch blades that we use. You know, you're down, you got a filer there, it's filing it for, you know, hours at a time. To, it might mess it up good. To hit metal with one of the, the wood miser blades, you might have run a, run a blade, but not only it only takes you about three minutes to change it, you're up and sawing again, and you lost $28. Well, on the seven, eight foot mills that we got, you know, your downtime and possibly may, maybe lose a $800 blade. There's a niche for it. I think every mill ought to own one at any size because if you utilize it and integrate it into your sawmills, it will make you money. And it's been one of the best, best investments I've made. I figured at some point in time, uh, everyone would be going to the wood miser mills just because of the savings. Because I mean, you know, the timber is getting harder to get. It's the rainy season. Uh, what's the old saying, the most bang for your buck or whatever, and I think these mills do that. I'd hate to have to go back to saw on a, a circle mill just because of the waste. It's like my sons are looking at putting a mill in right now, and they said, well, Dad, what would you put in? And I said, well, I'd put in an LT300, feeding a bandery, so I said, you're, you're going to be efficient. Your overhead's gonna be down. Electric bill's gonna be cheap. Very little repairs. Your main expense is gonna be your blades. You can resharpen them. And uh, me, that's a perfect setup, and especially these day at this market. I run the big mills. There is a need for the wood miners, and I integrate it in every mill I got. Because you put the right logs to it, it's going to make you money. And it's been a, like I said, it's been a blessing for us. It turned, it turned the pike to mill around.